All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Mick Thomas here. How are you? Thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing, and coming on back. I do appreciate it. Get me wherever you're getting your podcast from. Spotify, iTunes, uh, Podbean, blah, 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 the usual. And then head over to uh, YouTube where you get to see me. I don't know for how long, though. You, YouTube keeps shadow banning it. And there's, there's been a lot of stuff going on. Um, they've been taking down a lot of stuff. Uh, YouTube has been taking down a lot of people's podcasts, which is very interesting, you know, because it, it kind of it doesn't agree with a lot of um, things that you say. So it takes it down. Uh, so I don't know how long this will stay up on an episode. This is kind of a, a, a controversial subject I want to talk about today. So YouTube, you invisible cowards hiding behind the wall, throwing stones over at the kids playing football in the field. We used to have a neighbor like that, Mrs. Healy. We had a field right next to her house on the wall and we'd be playing football, soccer, as it's known in America. And all of a sudden these stones would come over the wall because she didn't like us playing there. That's what YouTube are. Hello, Mrs. Healy. I was only joking. You all right? How are you? Anyway, so, um, yeah, so watch me on YouTube. Also, The Man's ID Show, another episode coming out this week. We're on a roll for you. Me and my good buddy, Corey Brooks, that's available. And come see me live if you're listening to today, Monday, Monday being, and you live on Long Island. My last show on Long Island for a while is at Stephen Talkhouse out in Amagansett, out in the Hamptons. That's where it's all going to be happening. Uh, that's tonight. And then this Saturday, I am opening for Brad Williams. Uh, his He's taping his special at the Sony Theater in New York City. Brad's one of my favorite comics. Uh, and I'm very grateful that he asked me to come and open for him on his big night. So, uh, I, oh, pfft, oh my God. Arizona, next week, the 22nd. What are you doing? What do you like? Come on out and see me. There's tickets on sale. There's still some tickets available. Uh, I'd say a few. T- I don't know. I haven't been looking at the ticket sales. I don't watch that shit. It depresses me. Um, and then in Florida, New Smyrna Beach, 18th, 19th of August, I will be headlining at Madcap Comedy Club. So do come on down. I would love to see you. Anyway, what I want to talk about today is I went to see the movie um, Sounds Sounds of Freedom. And I don't know if you if you if you've heard because you haven't heard much about it because it it's been blocked out by the media. It has got no advertisements uh, on national like on on regular television like everything else. It's kind of word of mouth. It's been shared through social media, and uh, it's a true story based on a, a, a hero, uh, Tim Ballard, and it's he's played by uh, Jim Jim Caviezel, who you may know, who played. Uh, Jesus Christ in the Passion of the of the Passion of the Christ, Passion of the Christ, yeah, Passion of the Christ. Um, he plays Jesus of Nazareth uh, in in that movie, and no coverage. You didn't see uh, Jim Caviezel. He wasn't on, uh, you know, like look at coming tonight on the Tonight Show, right? He's not on the couch with with Jimmy Fallon. He's not playing beer pong or some weird ping pong game dressed as a cat on Jimmy Fallon promoting this movie. No place would take him. None of the three letter companies would take him to promote this movie. And it's done by Angel Studios. Angel Studios, we'll talk about them in just a moment. But I went to see the movie. And funny enough, the movie came out on opening day on July 4th and it made $40 million with no advertising. It's just word of mouth of people sharing it and texting it. $40 million... Uh, and then Indiana Jones came out and made twenty four million dollars. Right, another another flop by Disney. And um, I don't know, man. Like, wh- why? Good. We we're done seeing these movies with these old people. You know, you're you're too old, Indy. And we love the old movies. You just sometimes you have to walk away and stop trying to cash in on people's nostalgia just to fucking cash a paycheck because it's a dumb idea. A ninety five year old man with a whip swinging on shit. It ain't. There's one guy who's supposed to run a country and he can't do that. And he's a little bit younger than Indiana Jones. So let's not pretend that we're going to believe this story. So I'm kind of glad that it did that. Um, And the movie is a true story based on Tim Ballard, who uh, brought down and continues to bring down sex trafficking um, rings, organizations. Uh, and I don't know what upset me more about when I went to see this movie. First of all, the movie was sold out all week. I couldn't get tickets for opening day. I couldn't get tickets all week. I got a shitty seat down at the front looking up at an angle. Every movie was sold out for a week. Every time slot was sold out for a week. 
What will that tell you? So many people want to see this movie, but yet it was covered up. And we'll get into maybe why it was covered up earlier. But I don't know what offended me more. I don't know what upset me more was... I don't know who's worse in this world. The the pedophiles, and I'm going to call them pedophiles, right? Because in Ireland we say pedophiles, but I don't want to... We pronounce it pedophiles, but we're, I'm not going to say it like because you'll be annoyed the whole time. Like, I, I, I was annoyed. Like, I used to do karate when I was a kid and someone would call it karate and you want to karate chop him to the neck so and that would annoy me so I'll just so I won't annoy you by saying pedophiles I'll say pedophiles as much as I can through this movie but I don't know what upset me more that the, the pedophiles are people who talk during a movie before I get into it listen I ugh, come on man like what you're like you ever watch the Simpsons or do you ever watch South Park when the town comes together as a mob and it just kind of really highlights how dumb society can be like what moron society is like and the main stars are the same ones and but society's morons with a mob and and, and i i feel long island is like that just animals in a theater right cell phones go like seriously a cell phone went off and then someone goes yells shut off your fucking phone and the woman goes i'm sorry just like sarcastically and all you hear shut up right you know like kind of like the guy from monsters inc you're making him lose his focus and um you know, but then next to me, this old couple comes in. I'm sitting at B13. B13. That'll tell you how close it was to the screen. B13. A, B. Goes all the way up to fucking it. W, I think. I'm at A. I'm at B. And this old couple comes in. The movie started, obviously. Of course it started. You come in late. And, and you, you get... What seat number is that? Oh. Oh. It's B13. 13. 13. Well, we're at 12. Well, go fucking sit. Then they sit down and she turns her, her light, her flash on the phone. I go, miss, your light's on the phone. Give her the benefit of doubt. Maybe she wasn't aware. Maybe she wasn't aware. And then they took out something which I'd never seen before in a movie theater. I know they offered them. I know they offer these things at the movie theater. They they have a headphones, for which I thought were for the hearing impaired. Right? You put it on the headphones, it enhanced the sound. I know what's going on with the movie. They're not. These are for visually impaired. So the fucking headphones are describing what see you're seeing. So I'm sitting there watching a movie and I can hear, because you know when someone's headphones drop too loud? So the guy's obviously deaf and fucking blind. So all I can hear is like, the, the camera pans out over a Colombian village. A girl plays the bongo drums. I'm like, fuck this. Fuck, I'm just going to leave. I'm going to leave because I've been waiting for a year for this movie since I heard it was banned and nobody, could, no company would pick it up. I've been waiting for this movie for a year. And I was like, fuck. So the guy took it off. It settled down. So anyway, I, when, whenever I hear about a movie theater shooting, like, oh, did you hear someone went to the movie theater and shot him up and go, oh, what a horrible person. Hang on a second. Let's ask some questions. Was he a horrible person or was everybody around him talking? Because I can see it. I can see it. I don't condone it. I don't, I don't, I, I wish it wouldn't happen. But... But I can understand it. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I can get I can get into your mind and go, you shouldn't have done it, mate, but I, I get it. Your Honor, listen, if I'm on a jury, it's going to be tough. You might not get to cheer. You want me on your jury if you're arrested for a movie theater shooting. That's all I'll say. She wants to see the light of day on YouTube anyway. So, um, But anyway, so let me get on to the movie. So the movie does cover uh, a lot. And it's, first of all, my, 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 I'll be honest with you, my cheeks were never dry during the movie. I just cried through the whole movie, laughing my ass off. Terrible joke, Mick. It's not appropriate. Um... I was bawling through the whole movie, like literally from start to finish. And it's a PG-13 movie, right? So it's it's everything is implied, which is worse because now you have to use your imagination. So uh, and if you have a weird imagination, if you have a dark... Is my thing even going here on this thing? If you have... It's not... What the fuck is going on with this? Ah, oh, man. Uh, hang on. No, don't save. Just continue. We'll save that. And then we'll add another recording to this episode. And I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. And uh, let's go and let's continue. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. It's still not going. It's still not going. It's not recording. Fucking hell. Sorry, guys. Give me one second. Technical difficulties. The one episode I didn't want this to happen to uh, is happening. But let's go again. Let's try it one more time. And there you go. Okay, now it seems to be running, but the sound's not going to be great. Whatever. Anyway, I am so sorry about that. So, um, yeah. So let, let's get into it again. So let me start again. Um, 
So it 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 is about um. So you talk about the sex the sex trafficking industry about and it's about the 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 trafficking of children. So let's talk a little bit about if you don't know what goes on with the sex trafficking. It, it's it's a hundred and fifty billion dollar a year industry. A hundred and fifty billion dollars a year, which means it's almost more than the drug the drug trade and there's lines in the movie that will scare the shit out of you like you can use a bag of cocaine uh once done but you can use a child five times a day and these are some of the things that were that were uncovered so if 150 billion people and of course this is the scary part this is the scary part at least for me being a father and a human uh living in america america is the number one consumer of of child pornography also it is um almost number one in the production of child pornography that's a lot that's a lot of child pornography uh to that amount it's hard to wrap your head around then you got canada that they recently in alberta uh, uncovered a sex traffic ring for children and they found over a million photos and videos uh now i know you're thinking oh it's canada they're nice and probably a million pictures and videos some of those must be duplicates right you know when you're going your, your phone it's like that's the same picture of my steak dinner delete one of them um but anyway they found they found um but then my terrible jokes are for my own insecurities my own uncomfortableness so it's a reflection on me uh my weaknesses not me being an uh an asshole an insensitive asshole um so there's a lot, there's a lot, uh, you know, going on with this. It's such a huge, and in the movie it shows legit abductions of happening in broad daylight uh, of children. So it's about Tim Ballard. Tim Ballard is a, a gentleman who, the, the left came after him. I don't know why. The man is out literally saving children's lives. He, so, some of the things I'll tell you about him because I did a lot of research on 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 the guy. I watched a lot of podcasts about him. Uh, read I read his book, and there's a lot of stuff about him that that are not in the movie. That you know I don't think they were necessary, but I I'd like to talk about him. But he um he gave up basically twelve million dollars uh, worth of pensions to go fight this he was he sold his house to fund this and none of that is in the movie to fund these operations to go down and save uh, uh and save these children um but he t so he got attacked from the left from left media a while ago about saying he supports QAnon the QAnon conspiracies and he doesn't QAnon took something he said and ran with it and, and exaggerated meaning that there's these people who take children's blood and they drink it and sacrifice it. And so, of course, QAnon were like, well, it's Ellen, it's Tom Hanks, it's all these things. But having said that, he did he did say that, that that does happen, but he never mentioned celebrities do it. So he, uh, in West Africa, he walked into this place, into this factory where, and of course, the boiler would kick on. Uh, he walked into this, basically a factory full to the top of these young girls, uh, teenage girls, um, who are all tied there and they're basically being raped uh, around the clock repeatedly uh, all kidnapped girls all kidnapped women young women um, and they're raped around the clock they give birth to children and the children are then sold the babies babies are then being sold uh, for sex trafficking um, labor and um, labor and uh, sacrificial things right so they, they found these like witch doctors with chop up babies and take their organs and 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 they would you know nail the, the organs over their doors so the dark lords would support their businesses um he took that he told that legit story and of course q and on ran with it but they tried to discredit him on a lot of stuff which is weird like why why are you trying to discredit someone who's doing something so good who's trying to stop something so evil you know like why and he's highlighting stuff like we're letting the mexican border open now this is not about stopping immigrant people coming in that'd be very hypocritical of me and i get what it must be like to i don't get what it must be like i've never been to that hardship thank god but i understand what it must be like to have absolutely nothing to have watch your family starve in front of you but yet over that over there a few miles is food is shelter i get it but 
these people are not they have no documentation coming in and they're showing the movie how you just walk across with a kid and all you got to do is lie about the kid the kid is threatened that hey if you open your mouth i'm going to kill your sister i'm going to do this um so these people are thousands a day are coming in with trafficked children across the u.s border every day and we're doing nothing about it we're not stopping it we're not interfering with it we're not putting any we're not putting any stop to it so we don't know why that's happening right we 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 don't know why there's no push on this we don't know why people are trying to stop people like tim ballard and his company underground railroad um yeah, i recommend you check it out um we don't we don't look at that right we don't we don't we don't look at that we don't look at why like something like like just like maxwell right like then there's a reference to islands in the movie that are set up by these people they don't say Epstein Island, but everybody kind of like, well, well, there you go. That's weird. Um, just Liam Maxwell was arrested for sex trafficking, right? But why isn't, why aren't we talking about who was on the, like, who did you traffic the kid to? Because usually for a crime to be committed, you have to have a person have committed that crime to you do you understand does that make sense so like if 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 make if i get arrested for punching someone in the face you have to tell well who did he punch record shows he punched blah 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 so if she is sex trafficked children so meaning did she just bring a child somewhere is that but that's just trafficking it's not sex trafficking so sex traffic sex trafficking is that you gave that child to somebody for sexual use sexual abuse um he's freestyling now uh but who did you give it to so there has to be a list. So there is something remarkable that that's not out yet. Those those people haven't been like named yet. It's just remarkable to me. So that we don't we don't do that, right? So Tim Ballard went like we don't we don't highlight the Mexican border thing. We're not calling people out. And Tim Ballard has uncovered that their teachers, like U.S. teachers, doctors, lawyers, pastors, priests, rabbis. People that are every, you're in your gym, you could be listening right on the treadmill right now. Look two people down. $150 billion, America being the number one consumer. There's a chance you look around the room you're in right now, there is probably a pedophile around someone that's into that. We don't do anything about it, right? And then you go, Tim Batter goes to Congress. He's like, listen, you have organizations that are trying to stop calling people pedophiles and calling them maps. I've seen videos of teachers throwing a kid out of his classroom, he said, because he said pedophile. Don't say pedophile. They're not pedophiles. They're considered maps, minor attracted person. You can't help these people. And I'll talk about that in a, in, in a brief second, right? You're doing that. And then you're giving, you're, 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 you're trying to lower like, France tried to do to lower the age of consent for sex for children for 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 people lower the age of consent then you're sexualizing children all day every day you're giving them books about blowjobs oral sex they're in the school libraries in America for 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 kids are not even adolescent in the adolescent stage yet and they're fucking reading these books to cure like they're, they're not even curious at eight or nine you're not even curious you're not even you don't give a shit at eight or nine at least I didn't and my friends didn't you're trying to lower that. And then you talk about, like, you know, you, you, you can mutilate a 13-year-old in California without the parent's consent. You can give him all that stuff. There was a story I read about this girl who, who she, she went, she's going through school, right? And she tried to go through a transition. She tried to go through some transition to become something. So what happened? Listen, let's be honest about these people who are transitioning. Let's be honest about what you look like. You don't, you don't go, I'm transitioning and now I look like a girl. Like, you don't walk down and she goes, wait, that's, oh my God, that's a girl. You don't do that. You go, that's a dude who wants, that's a dude who no longer wants to be a dude that looks like a dude who dressed up like something that's not a dude. Or a girl that's dressed up as, a, wants to be a boy, but they're not. A, you just see that it's not. You know it's not by looking at it. So let's, let's be honest. Battery's going low. This whole episode's falling apart. Uh, let's be honest. It's not. We know what you. We know what we see. We can again. We can give them the respect. By the way, that's not about respecting anyone's genders. But you can give them the respect, right? If, I'm, I'm not talking about not giving them respect. I'm talking about you know what you're looking at. There's no job that's done that good. You go, oh my god, I was totally fooled. Didn't know the difference there. Didn't know the difference. I've never seen a case. Prove me wrong. Send it to me, and I'll go. Shit. All right. Good. So what are we doing with these? What are we doing with these? So then this girl who told this story, what does she do? She can't get, no one in school wants to date her because she's at that stage. 
She's at that stage of I, I'm trying to look like a boy, but I'm not. So the girls won't date me. And I'm a girl that looks too much. Like, so nobody dates her. So she turns to the web. She goes online. And then that's where the fucking monsters come. That's where the monsters come. And so Tim Ballard, something like that, we're approving all this. We're allowing it to happen. Right? And then you t- look, we talk about pedophiles. I've done, I've studied a lot of shit on this. Um, not a lot on pedophiles. But I've done a lot of mental disables, mental disabilities, all that kind of stuff. And pedophiles usually, usually are just evil. They just are. It doesn't come from abuse. You, you, you think that it comes from abuse and then they abuse. There are some cases of that. But the majority of them are just want to keep going and going and going with their addiction. They want to keep going and going and going with porn porn i got to keep going to the edge i'm not into that anymore i got to keep going what's the next thing i can do it's just it's pure evil it's pure evil and that's what it is it's good versus evil and that's why and it is it's good versus evil you you can come back and say no that's not that's not you know whatever and that's why angel studios which is a christian uh i worked for angel studios last year last october i did um i did a special for them a dry bar special and i wish I wish I had given the respect to Angel Studios when I was there. I did, of course, I respect them. I'm very, very professional. But I wish I was knew the greatness of that studio that I was in. I just, I do, and I regret that now. Looking back on it, I go, holy shit, look at what they've done. And I was just, I was in the moment, and I never, never followed through on it. I never, I never appreciated where I was at that moment because I didn't realize how much of an impact it had on me on all their shows and, and now this movie and I wish I, I'd given it to him but it's sold out everywhere it is sold out everywhere you know and the thing about this movie is look and I'll kind of wrap it up on this because I, I don't know I, I I think I've been too serious for too long um, the reason why I think it's a problem and a lot of actors didn't want to be in this movie too which is very common is because they didn't want to hurt their careers because for some reason it was banned you weren't allowed involved in this don't get involved people over there because it was considered a right wing movie don't get involved everybody was told their agents were telling them don't you know what Schindler's List was a great movie right it was made during it was made after the Holocaust happened though, like about almost 100 years later right so we can make that movie now because it was over 100 years ago or nearly 100 years ago but this movie is happening now Hotel Rwanda was made way after all that all that thing happened. This is happening today. Today, and this is why it's uncomfortable. So why don't we do instead of like, you know, there's more slaves now than there's ever been. Sex slaves, labor slaves, people getting their organs harvested for people who don't want to be on a waiting list. And that's not a joke. That's not a made up conspiracy. There's more slaves alive today than there ever has been. That's when slavery was was legal. That's fucking scary. So how about we stop making more of these 12 years a slave thing? And that's not ever discarding what uh, the African-Americans went through during their time of slavery. That's not at all downplaying it. Um, Right? But we've kind of, we've kind of luckily put that behind us. Uh, We have laws all passed. People are protected. I'm not saying there's not a generational kind of effect of that because if your great grandfather was a slave and the stories get told I'm not saying that doesn't affect you I get that about the British from my family so I'm not discarding at all what, what African Americans went through with slavery um, but instead of watching making these movies now where it it, it, it makes white people guilty because they're the only there's, there's never Indians like people from India or Mexico with black slaves it's never that it's always us people right so white people are felt left felt terrible even though we weren't there and black people are left kind of angered understandably understandably um so how about we all feel ashamed how about we all feel like we're not doing enough how about we all keep an eye on it how about we all fucking protect our children like our children do you know what i mean like we look after we look after your own your family 
you know stop letting the fucking administration say it. they're our children no they're fucking not you mind your fucking business you can't even do your own job and now you're going to try to be a mother and father to my kids you're not going to do it anyway I cannot recommend this movie enough I cannot recommend if you can get tickets if you're lucky to get it uh, if you haven't seen an advertisement if you know if you didn't know well now you know anyway I gotta go uh, sorry about the break up in the middle of all the technical problems but uh, thanks for listening liking subscribing and sharing as always wash your hands you dirty fuckers good luck to you good luck to you